Welcome to iLecture Online. Now you may say, is there some strategy by which we should try to find the domain and the range? And the answer is yes. There, are, there is indeed a strategy. There are specific things we should look for when we're trying to determine the domain and the range of either a function or a relation. So here are the steps we should take, not necessarily in that order, but this is not a good set. First of all, try to graph the function or the relation because once you have a visual picture in front of you, it makes it easier to determine what the domain and the range is. Secondly, identify the restrictions. There may be certain things that are prohibited or that cannot be possible. Thirdly, identify the values for x that make the denominator equal to zero. Of course, you cannot have a zero denominator because then you end up with an, an, an undefined fraction or an undefined number and so therefore anything that will make the denominator zero needs to be eliminated from the solution and then also look for and identify the vertical and the horizontal asymptotes. Now it turns out that the vertical asymptotes are usually associated with values of x that makes the denominator zero but then you also have the horizontal asymptotes that give you specific restrictions on the value for y as well. So let's try a couple of simple examples. First of all let's try y equals x squared. You recognize that to be a parabola where the bottom of the parabola is at the origin. So it looks something like that. Notice that there are restrictions. The fact that you have y equals x squared, x squared can only be a positive number. Therefore y cannot be a negative number. That means the lowest value for y has to be zero or a positive number above that. And so you can see that the range, because the range is associated with y, cannot be negative. You cannot have any y values below the x-axis. Aren't there any restrictions for x? It turns out x can be as big as you want it to be. In other words, the parabola, even though it goes up much higher than it goes wide, there's no restriction on to how wide you can go. You can just keep going up and the x values can get bigger in the positive and in the negative direction without any restrictions at all. Which means, if we then find the, the domain, the domain is going to be equal to the set of all the x's such that x is an element of the real values. This is the way we write that there's no restriction on x. x can be part, can be anything. So it's an element of all the real values in the number system, which means x can be any real number. On the range, however, there is a restriction. The range, it's going to be all the values for y such that y is greater than or equal to zero because we realize the restriction is that y cannot be negative, so it must be zero or greater. And so that's the way we're going to write the expression indicating what the domain and the range is. Here we have another example, y equals 1 over x minus 1. And we should try to graph that. First of all, what you may want to think about is graphing y equals 1 over x. If we graph that, and that is indeed a function. So here's our y-axis, there's our x-axis. It looks like this. And notice that it never reaches the x-axis and it never reaches the y-axis. So there's two asymptotes. The x-axis and the y-axis are asymptotes, which means that y can never be zero and x can never be zero. But if we now have this here, this simply means that the function is moved to the right by one unit. So we can draw a vertical line like this, this is where x equals 1. So it takes the whole function and it moves it to the right by one unit. So that this is what this looks like, like this. And this is what it looks like over on this side. Let me try to draw a little better like that. So again, we see that it asymptotically reaches the line, uh, the x-axis, but it also asymptotically reaches the line, the vertical line, called x equals 1. In other words, x can never equal 1 and y can never equal 0. Now, if you look at the denominator, notice that if x is equal to 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, that gives us a 0 denominator, which means that's a value that we cannot allow in the set. So now, if we're going to write the, uh, the domain and the range, the domain is equal to all the numbers x, such that x is not equal to, since it cannot equal 1, we can simply define it like that. All x's. With one exception, x cannot equal 1. That's one way to write the domain. And the range, we could do the same thing, is the values of all the y's such that y is not equal 
2, in this case, that would be 0. You can be more explicit. You could say it's the set of all numbers except x not equal to 1, the set of all numbers except y not equal to 0. But either way, it makes it plenty clear that x can be all numbers except equal to 1, and y can be all numbers except equal to 0. And that's how we express the domain and the range. But you don't do the algebraic way? If this is graphically? Oh, yes. Yes. We are going to do all kinds of examples showing you all the various ways of doing it, even algebraically. This is just the introduction to the systematic way of doing it. I think the reason of, it was confusing for me with the domain and range is that I feel like there are two concepts at once because now you're just looking for what the domain is. And then all of a sudden they introduce domain, which is something new, and they sort of look for something that's new. Yes. And that was uh, very hard for me. Yeah, I, I remember struggling with the concept as well. I always, and I always forgot that the main was with the x and the range with the y. I always had to go back and go, the main, what are they talking about, x or y in the range, yeah. same thing. Yeah. It took me a while until I finally started realizing, oh, it's alphabetical, so d becomes before r, x becomes before y, and I could make the association. No, I remember I range is y, range is y, but the <laughs> other one is the other one. And then for me, it's like, yeah, they, that's true. Just give me all the possible values for x. Forget the word domain. Yeah, I, I would agree. Yeah, because you're introducing two new concepts, and for this um, simple brain, it's hard to deal. <laughs> yeah, the word sometimes can really trip you up. The, the concept is straightforward enough. Yeah. Give me all the possible values for x and all the possible values for y. That's essentially what we're doing. Yeah, but once you say domain and then you say range, it's like... <laughs> 